In this video, we're going to talk about the maximum power transfer theorem. This theorem states that the maximum power delivered from the source to the load resistance occurs when RL, the load resistance, is equal to R sub TH, the Thevenin resistance. And to calculate the maximum power delivered, you could use this formula. It's 1 over 4 times the square of the Thevenin voltage divided by the Thevenin resistance, which is the same as RL or R sub L. So those are the two formulas that we're going to be using in uh, this particular video. Consider this example problem. Go ahead and determine the load resistance where the circuit will deliver maximum power from the battery source to the load and also determine the maximum power delivered. So in order to calculate the load resistance, we need to calculate the Thevenin resistance. And to calculate the Thevenin resistance, what we're going to do is we're going to create an open circuit across the load resistor, and we're going to replace the voltage source with a short circuit, or basically a line. So the equivalent resistance of the three resistors in a circuit is going to equal our Thevenin resistance. So if we have these three resistors, what is the equivalent resistance? So the 12 and the 24 ohm resistor are parallel to each other. And then those two resistors are in series with the 17 ohm resistor. So we're going to add 17 to it. To calculate the parallel equivalent resistance, or rather the equivalent resistance of two resistors in parallel, it's going to be 1 over 12 plus 1 over 24 raised to the minus 1. Now, 1 over 12, that's the same as 2 over 24. And then 2 over 24 plus 1 over 24 adds up to 3 over 24. And when you raise that to the minus 1, you basically flip the fraction. So you get 24 over 3. And 24 over 3 is 8. 8 plus 17 is 25. So the Thevenin resistance is 25. So if we set the load resistance to 25 ohms, maximum power will be delivered from the source to the load resistance. So now, in order to calculate the maximum power, we need to calculate the Thevenin voltage. So to do that, we're going to keep the source intact. And we're going to remove the load resistance from the circuit. So the Thevenin voltage is basically the voltage across the load resistor when it's not there. It's the voltage across point A and B. So go ahead and take a minute to calculate the Thevenin voltage. So because we have an open circuit across points A and B, there's not going to be any current flowing through the 17 ohm resistor. So all we need to do is calculate the potential at C. We're going to say that the potential at B is 0 volts. So thus the potential at point D is going to be 18 volts. Now to calculate the potential at point C, we need to use the fact that these two resistors form a voltage divider circuit. And so the potential at point C is going to be the potential at point D times the 24 resistor divided by the sum of these two resistors, the 24 ohm plus the 12 ohm. And so it's going to be 18 times 24 over 36. Now, 24 over 36, that reduces to 2 over 3, if you divide both numbers by 12. And so 18 times 2 is 36, divided by 3 is 12. So the potential at point C is 12 volts. Now, as was mentioned before, there's no current flowing through the 17 ohm resistor. Because there's no current flowing through it, the voltage drop across it is zero. So VC 
and VA are the same. Thus, the feminine voltage is going to be the potential difference between A and B. B is at zero. So the feminine voltage is 12 volts in this example. So now that we have that, we can calculate the maximum power delivered. So the formula is 1 fourth times the feminine voltage squared divided by the feminine resistance. So it's 1 fourth times 12 squared divided by 25. So 12 squared is 144. Divide that by 4, you get 36. 36 divided by 25 gives you this answer, 1.44. So the maximum power delivered is equal to 1.44 watts. Here is another example with more elements in the circuit. So feel free to pause the video and go ahead and calculate the feminine resistance, the feminine voltage, and the maximum power delivered in the circuit. So let's begin with the feminine resistance. So let's replace the battery with a short circuit and then Let's write up all resistors. We're going to replace the 5 amp current source with an open circuit. And we're going to get rid of the load resistor. So what is the equivalent resistance between points A and B? Go ahead and take a minute to try that. So let's write down all the resistors that we have here. So the first thing we need to realize is that the 6 ohm and a 12 ohm resistor are parallel to each other. The 4 and the 7 are both in series with the equivalent resistance of the 6 and a 12 ohm resistor. So it's going to be 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12 raised to the minus 1, and then 4 plus 7 is 11. 1 over 6 is the same as 2 over 12. And 2 over 12 plus 1 over 12 is 3 over 12. 3 over 12, we could reduce that to 1 over 4. And 1 over 4 raised to the minus 1 is 4. So it's 4 plus 11, which is 15. So that's how we could calculate the Thevenin resistance for this particular example. So we have 15 ohms. So that's the first step. The second thing we want to do is calculate the Thevenin voltage. So now let's redraw the circuit. So we're going to keep everything except the load resistor. That's the only thing we're going to remove when calculating the Thevenin voltage. So what is the voltage across points A? and B. So how can we find the answer? Go ahead and try this problem. Let's call this R1. Actually, we don't need to do that. Let's just keep the values here. And for some reason, I threw in an extra resistor. So what do you think we need to do to get our answer. What I like to do is identify all of the important nodes. So this is the same as point B. We can call this point C, point D, and point E. So let's assign a potential of zero volts to the ground or point B. That means point E has a potential of 24 volts. And we know that there's no current flowing through the 7 ohm resistor. So the potential at point A and C are the same. So if we can calculate the potential at point C, we're going to get the Thevenin voltage. Now we know that there's a 5 amp current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor. So that means that there's a voltage drop of 20 across that resistor. Now here is a question for you. Let's focus on the 6 ohm resistor. Will current in the 6 ohm resistor, will it flow from point E to D or from point D to E? What would you say? Now let's assume it flows from point E to D. 
we also have a current of 5 amps flowing from point C to D. That means all of that current has to flow through the 12 ohm resistor. And if all of the 5 amp current flows through the 12 ohm resistor, that's the voltage drop of 60. So D has to be at 60 volts or even higher. And current will not flow from a low potential to a high potential. So therefore, there has to be a current flowing from point D to E and not from E to D. So a portion of the 5 amp current will flow through the 12 ohm resistor. Let's call that I2. And the portion of the 5 amp current flowing through the 6 ohm resistor, we'll call it I1. Now, the current that is entering point D, that's the 5 amp current. The currents that are leaving point D, I1 and I2, they have to add up to that 5 amp current. So we can say that I1 plus I2 is equal to 5. Now keep in mind, the current flowing through the resistor is equal to the voltage across it divided by the resistance. So to calculate I1, it's going to be the voltage across the 6 ohm resistor. So that's going to be VD minus VE. VE is 24 divided by the 6 ohm resistor. That's I1. To get I2, it's going to be VD minus 0 volts because that's the voltage across the 12 ohm resistor. So VD minus 0 divided by the 12 ohm resistor. So all of that has to equal to 5. So what we can do now is multiply both sides of the equation by 12 to get rid of the fractions. So 12 divided by 6 is 2. So we're going to have 2 times VD minus 24. And then 12 times this fraction, the 12s will cancel. And so we're just going to get VD. And then 12 times 5 is 60. Distributing the 2, we're going to have 2VD minus 48 plus VD is equal to 60. So now we can combine like terms. This will give us 3 times VD and add in 48 to both sides. 60 plus 48 is 108. So now dividing both sides by 3. 108 divided by 3 is 36. So that is the potential at point D. It's 36 volts. So now we can determine the currents. To calculate I1, it's going to be the voltage across the 6 ohm resistor. That's 36 minus 24. So we have 12 volts across it divided by the 6 ohms. So that's 2 amps. So I1 is 2. So if 2 amps of current is flowing through the 6 ohm resistor and 5 amps of current is flowing through the 4 ohm resistor, that means 3 amps of current must be flowing through the 12 ohm resistor. And 12 times 3 gives us 36. So that makes sense. So now let's calculate the potential at point C. The potential at point C is equal to the potential at point D plus the voltage drop across the 4 ohm resistor. The potential at point D is 36 volts. The current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor, which is between point C and D, that is 5 amps times the 4 ohm resistor. So we have a voltage drop of 20 across the 4 ohm resistor. So that means that VC is at 56 volts. It's 20 volts higher than VD. So now that we have the potential at point C, we now know the Thevenin voltage. So the potentials between point A and B, which is equal to point C, that is 56 volts, since there's no current flowing through the 7 ohm resistor. So now we can calculate the maximum power delivered. So it's going to be 1 fourth times the square of the Thevenin voltage divided by the Thevenin resistance. So it's 1 fourth times 56 squared divided by 50, I mean 15 ohms. 56 squared is 3136. Divide that by 4, you get 784. 784 divided by 15 is equal to 52.26 repeating watts. So that is the maximum power delivered 
by this particular circuit. And here is the Thevenin resistance, and that is the Thevenin voltage. So that's it for this video. Now you know how to solve problems related to the maximum power transfer theorem.